people pay their fair share. If corporations and the ultra wealthy, if we reversed the, the tax bill, but when raised our, our corporate tax rate to 28%, if we do those two things and also close some of those loopholes, that's $2 trillion right there. If we implement a carbon tax, that's an additional amount of, um, of, of a large amount of revenue that we can have. And then the last key, which is extremely, extremely important, is reprioritization. Just last year, we gave the military a 700 billion dollar uh, tax uh, budget increase which they didn't even ask for wow. well that's the new socialist darling from the Bronx let's bring in Dan Bongino former Secret Service agent and former NYPD officer host of the Dan Bongino show podcast Dan uh, she appears to be speaking for a lot of Democrats even though she calls herself a democratic socialist uh, her big ideas are gutting the military and taxing the rich with different priorities what do you think yeah, Pete, she's also speaking for people who don't read books um, because almost <laughs> nothing she said in that clip was factually correct. Um, Ronald Reagan, yes, Ronald Reagan actually raised uh, a couple of taxes. When he raised those taxes, tax revenue went down. When he cut income taxes significantly, tax revenue went up. So what she's talking about, about raising taxes, she has very little evidence it's going to produce more revenue. Number two, she's confusing the entire military budget, Pete, with the increase. Mm -hmm. The entire military budget is around $700 billion. They didn't ask for a $700 billion increase. That, she's, she's running for Congress. You understand this, right? Not only, she, by the way, the, the, the lies go on or the mistruths or whatever the focus group tested word is. Then she says, and they didn't even ask for it. General Mattis actually lobbied for the increase. Does she not know that either? Did she just make up this whole thing? I mean, at what point is she going to go on the air and say something that is factually correct? Well, this is now what? A hundred interviews where she's flubbed something big? This is embarrassing Dan. now. Dan, let me just tell you, you know, that's not the only thing she's talking about. I mean, she clearly is pointing out some of the weaknesses of the GOP. She tweeted that the GOP is weak on fighting for working class Americans, weak on crime, weak on equal rights, weak on national security, weak on rejecting racism, weak on moral courage, weak on family values. So, you know, she says, hey, look, this is uh, this is the problem with the Republican Party. What say you? Yeah, yeah, that's just a genius tweet. Yeah, we're, we're weak on borders. We want a border wall. That'll definitely weaken up the border. Weaken on family values. That's, that's a fascinating new twist. Griff, is she just making this up? I, I, I mean, seriously, I, she may need an intervention after that tweet right here. That is insane. Why would you even write that? She doesn't even understand basic facts, by the way. That when she says the thing about fair share, you know, the top 1% of earners pay 40% of income taxes. Think federal income taxes. Think about that. One out of 100 people working their butts off out there mm. is paying 40 cents of every dollar. The top 20% of earners are, are paying up at 70 to 80%. Now, by the way, new rules on talking about the economy since Trump is in office, and I want to thank him for this. One, we're not apologizing for hard work anymore. Number two, we don't owe you a dime more, Captain Federal Government. Not a dime. Every time we give you a dollar, you waste it. You flushed our Social Security down the toilet. You ruined the education system. You're drowning us in $20 trillion in debt. We're not giving you any more money. You hear what we're talking about? New rules. No moss. No more money for you. <laughs> OK, you've ruined it. You've ruined all your credibility. It's not that the government is too big. It's that it's too dumb to spend our money the right way. We'll keep it now. Thank you very much. Well, Dan, there are a lot of Democrats that think she's the future of their party. They love the message that she's talking about. A lot of young people as well. You hear free education, free health care. Who doesn't want that? The big question, as we all are talking about this morning, is where is that money going to come from? How are you going to pay for it? So Cabot Phillips, who is on our show all the time, and he goes out and he gets just an idea of how people are thinking this country. He went to college campuses and asked them about oh, these policies. He went to the Bronx. Went he to went the to Bronx, her district. Actually, where she yeah. is from and where she campaigned. And, and here's what they said about how we're going to pay for this. Her platform includes um, free health care, college tuition, the minimum living wage, housing as a human right. Are those things that you think the government should be providing for people? Absolutely. Yes, it is. 100%. I feel like everyone should have like um, free um, education and health care. How are we going to pay for those? Oh, God. I mean... Us. Us, you I know. guess. Yeah. Who, in your mind, should pay for all of the free things? All of the free things? Well, some of it should come from taxes, but the government should pay for it. But the government is funded by taxes. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it, Dan. That, 
Oh, that last answer was epic because it sums up the entire progressive movement. How are we going to pay for it? By taxes, but then the government could pay for the rest. As if the government has like a money fairy. Like there's a money fairy that sprinkles money all around. This is, do you understand like the, the, the black hole of intellectualism current, the current progressive movement lives in? They don't understand. It reminds me of a Milton Friedman analogy where he said the great myth of progressivism is that you think your neighbor's paying for it. But your neighbor's saying the same thing. He thinks you're paying for it. They really yeah. believe there's a money fairy out there. I, listen, I want to, I, I, I mean this. I applaud Ocasio Cortez for doing the hard work to win it. I ran for Congress, I lost, I knocked on a lot of doors. Good, good, nice job. But I'm, I'm being serious here. She's running for Congress. She knows very little about what she's talking about. And if she's going to be the future of the party, she owes the voters out there some semblance of reality, and she's not living in it now. Well, Dan, based on those yachts behind you in that shot, you're clearly one of those one percenters that's paying for all of it. That's so true. Hey, I'm proud. I earned my money, and I'm proud of it. Dan, and new share rules. the wealth. I'm not apologizing anymore. Good send man, money, brother. Send your money fair up here. Yeah. We could use her for a little while. We could use a yacht for a little while. Thanks Dan, for being good with to us, see Dan. you this Appreciate morning. <laughs> you too. Thank you.